Please select a landing zone. Please select a mission. Let's go over the situation again. We've got another parasite outbreak in the laboratory on the quarantine platform. What is this? No idea. Transmission from inside. Here's the audio. Uh, it all makes uh, sense now. Uh, I... Uh, I win. Where's it coming from? Unknown. It cut off before we could get a fix. It all makes sense. Think he means the parasite? No way to know. But right now, that's all we've got. Hopefully he can tell us something. We'll have to close the tent behind you, boss. Don't think the infection's airborne, but...
Find the source of that transmission, boss. Find our man. You never know. What is it? Something sweet. I can smell it even through the mask. The rescue team reported that too. Said it smelled like ripe fruit. We cannot allow the infection to spread. If anyone shows symptoms, you must put them out of their misery. That includes me. I can't 
buddy. If I am, I don't want to go out like this. has died. What the hell happened? Oh. At least you're okay. What's going on? I win. I'm no snail. Damn it. Send the transmission. Seems like he had a way of IDing who's symptomatic. But what was he trying to say? Snail. Yes, of course. It all makes sense now. Do not let anyone showing symptoms get outside. As infection progresses, it triggers an overwhelming urge to get out in the open. That's the parasite controlling them. Once outside, the birds will feed on infected bodies, spreading the parasite on land.
shoot, boss. We can't let them outside. Damn it. We can't allow any contagious individuals to leave. That's it. That's good. You still have those goggles. If you see a glow in someone's throat, that means they are infected. And all you can do is give them a quick death. He's infected. Kill him, boss. We can't save him now. Quick, quick! Uh... 
There's nothing we could have done for them. We're all grateful, boss. of you! What? He's right. I killed him with my own hands. They were on your side. I'm on your side. And you turned them all to ashes. They wanted you to shoot. It was that or be burned alive. Come on. Let's get this over with. Wait. Scatter your sorrow to the heartless sea. them at sea. What then? We'll make diamonds from their ashes. Take them into battle with us. A shining light to our brothers in arms. Even in death. Boss, I don't know how you do it. I... All I could do was obsess over revenge, doubting my comrades along the way. But even after all we've accomplished, the phantom pain never let up. If anything, it just got worse. Please, But you understood please. that from the start, didn't you? From the moment you opened your eyes in that hospital, you knew it wouldn't go away. Yet you've been fighting the pain and confronting your phantoms the whole time. Knowing full well the battle would never end. Not till the day you die. I respect that now. More than ever. It's an honor and a privilege, Big Boss.
Please select a mission. Please select a landing zone. seen him around lately. Where did he get to? He is the official mascot of Mother Base, so he should show his face a little more. Want to know a secret? I saw Miller feeding Nuke when no one was looking. Mew Mew! Come here! Come here, kitty kitty! Come here! Nuke? Nuke! I'm sorry, Snake. My head hurts. Could you let me rest? Us. 
pecking us to death. Attracted by these sweet secretions, they have mutated to facilitate this. The sweet smell is powerful enough to attract even a species with such a weak nose. So, before the parasites take complete control, I must. Most of the staff in here are already infected. At least, everyone I've looked at is. Infection with this parasite causes a high fever in the pharynx. I have modified a pair of night vision goggles to react only to this temperature range. With these goggles, you can identify who is infected. Other infected will, like me, feel compelled to make it outside. If the ravens get their meal, they'll head for land next. That cannot be allowed to happen. The whole idea of the vocal cord parasites was that they'd only copulate once exposed to a specific language over time. But the parasites infecting our men in the laboratory laid their eggs straight away. The larvae were eating their lung tissue almost immediately. What kind of mutation was it? Those who were infected and cured still carried the vocal cord parasites in their throats. They were still there. But the males had been rendered female by the Bulbachia, and copulation could not occur, so we thought. But it is the Bulbachia that mutated. Not the parasites? You remember I told you the Bulbachia attempts to maximize its number of female infected hosts? Yes, hence the male-to-female transformation. Precisely. But other Bulbachia strains use different methods. Cytoplasmic incompatibility, killing the males, and parthenogenesis. Parthenogenesis? Aphids? Aphids use that to reproduce via females only. Very good. The females lay their eggs without a male present, creating clones of themselves in explosive numbers. Parthenogenesis was originally a means for an organism to take maximum advantage of abundant resources by increasing its numbers. Certain strains of Albachia forced this to occur, to create more and more infected females. And that's why our men develop symptoms in the blink of an eye. Albachia causing parthenogenesis is common in parasitic wasps. Of course, the Volbachia I introduced to your men did not have this characteristic, but I believe the mutation, whatever it was, caused it to force parthenogenesis in its host, the vocal cord parasites. The Volbachia we used to prevent egg laying became the agent of limitless reproduction. There's something else. The symptomatic infected in the laboratory all wanted to get outside, even knowing there was napalm waiting for them out there. You said the parasites made them act that way, but parasites controlling humans, is it possible? Parasites altering the host's behavior is a common occurrence in the world of nature. Long ago, the vocal cord parasites had this ability. But even I never foresaw they might control humans. Until I heard the things your man said. You mean the researcher on the top floor? The bit about, I'm not a snail? Yes. Among parasitic worms, there is a genus called Leucochloridium that uses snails as intermediary hosts. As you know, snails prefer dark, gloomy environments. But once parasitized by leucochloridium, they desire to be in the light. And that is not all. The parasitic worms thrust themselves into the snail's antennae, 
making them swell to abnormal size. The snail, meanwhile, frantically wiggles its antennae as the parasites squirm inside. The swollen, wriggling antennae soon resemble caterpillars. I don't get it. It is so they can be eaten by birds. Local Chloridium needs a bird as its definitive host. To breed, they require their snail host to be snapped up by a predator. So they make the humble snail appear to be a delicious caterpillar and lead it to somewhere in open sight. So you mean the staff trying to get outside was so the birds could pick at them. The parasites altered their mental state, making them crave higher places and to be outdoors. I can only surmise that both the Volbachia and the parasites mutated before the ancestors of the vocal cord parasites infected humans. Their hosts were birds. What we saw in the laboratory was some throwback to that time. The parasites attempting to make birds their intermediary hosts. It sounds insane. A prey mantis that is host to a parasitic hair worm will dive into water and drown itself. Just so the hair worm can lay its eggs in water. Rats infected with Toxoplasma gondii lose their instinctive caution and run right up to cats. Just some of the many ways parasites control the host. But we're humans. Surely our minds are too complex for that. I thought just the same. Free will is what makes us human, so it never occurred to me that the parasites could be controlling the symptomatic. But the mood... The will of a person can be easily affected by the balance of their cerebral substances. Take the toxoplasma I mentioned. It does infect humans, and it is thought the infected develop a more reckless attitude. Hmm. But to think that mutations occurred in both the Walbachia and its parasite hosts... Your observation is most apt. Both mutations occurring at once indicates the presence of a powerful mutagen. I see. Keep working on narrowing down what it was. The whole base is busy getting ready for Beast Day. Miller has finished writing his song, so I went with Professor Galvez to listen to it. Miller was really into it, humming away as he played the song on his acoustic guitar. But the song melody did not match up with the guitar chords at all, and it sounded more like a mess than music. Miller's very enthusiastic, but I think he's tone deaf. I guess the guitar backing sounded good at least. But as I was wondering how to break it to Miller, Professor Galvez took out an odd instrument. It was just two antennas sticking out of a box, more like a radio than a musical instrument. He said it was invented by the Soviets, but why would Professor Galvez own a Soviet Russian instrument? I asked him, and he told me music has no borders. Well, I cannot argue with that. Good music is something people of any nation can appreciate. Why not abandon war and just make music together? But anyway, the professor offered to try playing the melody on his instrument in time with Miller's guitar. It was like something from another world. But somehow, it fit Miller's guitar backing really well. It even gave the song a charming down-home kind of feeling. Miller was overjoyed. That is it. That is my melody right there, he said. It sounded totally different from when he sang it. But hearing the professor's version, I thought I could probably sing it. Then Miller hit me with the next bombshell. Buzz, you write the lyrics. I did not know whether to scream or to run out of the room. There was only one week left until peace day. Skullface, real name unknown. Born in Hungary, more specifically Northern Transylvania after it reverted to Hungary from Romania. 
While he was young, the country allied with Germany as part of the Axis powers, but later during the war, it came under Soviet occupation. The Hungarians struggled for independence, but the Soviets came down. Hard. Just like he said, time and again, the country was ruled by a foreign tongue. When he was a young boy, he lost his native language, the bedrock for any developing child. His country, his family, his face, his identity, everything was stolen from him. All he had left was his skull. Skullface first tried his hand at espionage during all the chaos from the war. Agents, military officials, and soldiers who operated out of Hungary during the war vanished over the course of several months. This Soviet spy hunt rocked the counter-intel world. Mysterious fatal illnesses, accidental deaths, drownings, people having strokes behind closed doors. Just like Stalin, no one knew who was behind it. But all you need to do was look for who had the motive. They were all taken out by a man without a face. And now we've got an idea of how he did it, too. He'd gotten revenge for his people, but he wasn't finished. Skullface defected to the West, eventually ended up with the SAS. That's where he met Zero. It's possible he began planning this whole thing back then. It's hard to say. In any case, Zero made him his XO. He always did have a thing for oddballs. But this one was set to lead a unit no one else would know about. When Zero created Fox, he also formed XOF as a support team. An unconventional special forces unit designed to support Fox, make it stronger. With Skullface given the orders, Zero never even told the boss about it. Nor the CIA, naturally. If Fox was Zero's silver bullet, XOF was the recoil when he pulled the trigger. Just like Newton's third law. While you were with Fox, Skullface was operating behind the scenes. Sometimes as your backup, sometimes as a mole or a scout, sometimes as your cleanup crew. Fox's tail, making sure the mission succeeded and that you survived. We only have his word to go on, but Skullface's goal was revenge against those who'd use language to subjugate people. Those corrupting a people's identity by forcing a new tongue on them. Those using the power of language to control information. Naturally, that set his sights on Zero. To Zero, English was simply the most convenient code. But to Skullface, English was a parasite. And by eradicating it, he'd stop the world from being eaten away. If that didn't work, he was ready to see the world scorched by nuclear fire. To save language, culture, and race from annihilation, he was willing to overstep the hands of the doomsday clock. That is, of course, if you believe anything he had to say. The one that covers the parasite that lives on the surface of the skull's bodies is what gives them their power. Similar to my children who live in my skin. I modified the parasites I isolated from the body of that old man, differentiating them with various abilities. One that can blend perfectly into its surroundings by exposing the pigments in its cells at will. Another that, by harboring multiple species of metallic archaea, can oxidize and reduce metal. Isolating the one that covers and transplanting it into an artificial medium should provide the same abilities as the skulls. But they can only subsist within a human body. Once transplanted into the medium, they will eventually die. Another thing, the weakness of the one that covers is desiccation. Their surface moisture loss is greater than ours. The reason they give off mist is to alleviate this by releasing the salts inside them as microparticles. Water vapor condenses around them, appearing as mist. But this dries out the atmosphere until they cannot even produce mist. 
and once their supply of water from the host runs out, the parasites are in danger. They, along with their host, enter a form of suspended animation. However, a similar effect occurs if they come into contact with a large amount of water. Rain, for instance. The one that covers will temporarily abandon other processes in his eagerness to absorb the water. Pitiholone. Make the weather your ally. What was your goal in having the children repair Sohalanthropus? I just answered their questions. I had no idea they would actually try to fix it. I mean, can you imagine a child piloting it? Oh, sure. Easily. It wouldn't work. Well, I bet it's just like riding a bike. I said it didn't work. It... Uh, Who did you try? I, I didn't. Did you put your son in it? Uh, we never did that. His name was, uh, Hal, wasn't it? I, I thought you said you never saw his face. But you made him pilot Sahalanthropus. You used him in your experiments. He wanted to get in. <sighs> it was such a short time we had. So he was with you. We were happy. You're still happy now. Changing your lies to suit the listener and getting by slipping through the cracks. Building layer upon layer of convenient stories until nothing means anything to you anymore. You're happy all the time, because you don't even oh, notice you're doing you. it. Think hard. Who are you, really? You're not a victim, and you're not the silent majority. You're a perpetrator and a petty hypocrite. The real world doesn't make you suffer. It's the other way around. Well, doctor, I have the report on the incident at the quarantine facility. Assuming the vocal cord parasite evolved, I'm sorry, underwent a mutation. The only plausible explanations are exposure to some high concentration mutagen or radiation. As you know, some of the staff at the quarantine facility were infected with the parasites. The Wolbachia prevented them from copulating, but the parasites themselves can't be removed from their host's vocal cords. Once you're infected with... Skullface's parting gift. You're stuck with it. The researchers regularly used X-ray equipment to monitor the parasites in their throats. No problem there, they kept a close eye on the radiation doses. But that equipment didn't just give off X-rays. It was also emitting beta rays. Even though that's unnecessary for the scans. See, beta rays have far worse effects on DNA than X-rays. Meaning the only logical conclusion is that someone added in a beta ray emitter to trigger a mutation. Those beta rays leaked out from inside the equipment. Because the emitter was retrofitted, the shielding was inadequate. And the person who ordered and inspected the equipment was you, Doctor. That makes you the only person with the opportunity to install that emitter. So now you're saying I sabotage medical equipment for some wild plan to make the vocal cord parasite kill everyone? Or maybe you thought it'd reveal a way to treat the parasite without using the Wolbachia. With that much to barter, I suppose some people would welcome even a pathetic cur like you. Just stop it! You'd have no shortage of buyers, but most would be happy with just the parasite. You wouldn't need to offer anything else. However... If that buyer already knew about the parasite, they'd also know that by itself, it's no longer the ultimate bargaining chip it once was. To sell to that buyer, you need to throw in a bonus. A way to one-up it. There's only one buyer who'd be after that. <laughs> Emmerich, we record all communications on Mother Base. That includes radio transmissions to and from homemade devices. You've been in frequent contact with people in America. A private biotech company. A client of which is DARPA. And they are connected to Cypher. You made a deal with Cypher. You offered them a new parasite in exchange for your safety. 
This is the only place in the world where the vocal cord parasite still exists. And you used it as a testing ground. Tried to resurrect their bioweapon. But your plan to obtain the parasite has failed. Your bullshit ends now. And don't think you're leaving here alive. while we were fishing. That day, I figured out that it doesn't really matter if you catch a fish or not. Just waiting for a fish together can be the most fun of all. <laughs> oh yeah, Chico got all worked up and almost fell into the sea. When they do some more fishing, tell me, okay? Please select a mission. Boss, this contract comes out of Angola. That's right, Central Africa, where Emirate claimed they were working on a weapon to surpass Metal Gear. There's been a massive oil spill from Mathinda oil field. It's flowing into the river and contaminating the water supply. An environmental NGO has asked us to stop the spill by destroying the facility. Environmental activism isn't exactly our line of work, but it's not that simple either. The group operating the oil facility and causing the spill is the rebel group UNITA. And word has it that UNITA is getting supplied with U.S. military weapons. That sounds to me like Cypher's pulling their strings. Boss, it's time to give Cypher a little surprise. Roger. This is B-Quad. Arriving shortly at LZ. 